Hey folks, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing an uh, unboxing, assembly kind of setup of the FMS Mall and the blue paint scheme here. So uh, uh, before we start, let's get uh, a uh, quick uh, kind of sound check. Make sure everybody's getting my voice. Make sure I got my mic set up. I got a good green bar at the bottom and I got tape sticking to me here. And uh, I got tape all over my desk here. I usually put scraps there. Uh, and uh, just make sure everybody's getting good audio. Make sure it's loud enough. There's no distortion. I turned off, uh, you know, a bunch of my other uh, sound inputs from videos and stuff. So thanks everybody for coming. I noticed we got uh, we got a few uh, questions already with guys here. So uh, we're gonna be showing. We're gonna get this out of the box. Get it together. As you guys know, we already had the float plane out flying, and we also had it flying on the land. Had ESC issues with the one, you know. Not a big deal. It's an ESC or a motor, and we'll be getting spares to replace that with. So, um, but it flew great. An awesome flying airplane. I really want to open it up, get it out there, start doing a little more aerobatics, and just getting aggressive with it. But I've had so much wind here, and then you know just motor problems with it. And again, that's kind of a one-off thing. But it flies fantastic. The 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 flying I did in the wind with it, um, it just flew so well in the wind. It was nice to fly around. Um, I can't wait to get in on some calm weather, which hopefully maybe this weekend we'll get to. So, uh, uh, but awesome bird. Assembles real nice. It's pretty cool. Floats, lights. I mean, it's just pretty sweet. So we'll talk about all the setup stuff and get it out of the box, assemble it, show it to you guys. And um, here, I'll call out a couple of guys that are here already. Let's see. Uh, Matthew Cox, Rich Sir, I know you're busy and have a lot of planes reviewed, but please, sir, waiting on your review of the Futura 3 uh, Green Mod, the one right up there. <laughs> right there. We actually... We flew it in the video. We had a crash with it. We glued it back together and kept flying it. So we'll throw that video out. Um, had a full throttle inverted kind of crash with it just because it was unstable. I didn't have the CG where I wanted it and I was pushing it a little bit. But anyway, I touched it up and stuff. It's good to go. It's still, we flew it and you know, finished the video out even though, even though we had a little kind of slider with it. Um, but it, it's pretty tough, guys. But, but yeah, CG wise, um, you know, I'm flying mine. Um, actually, kind of just to answer it, let's see. Uh, and my buddy is waiting for your video to see if he wants to pull the trigger on this bird. Told him uh, he does use your affiliate link. Hey, thanks for doing that. Uh, that's Matthew Cox. Appreciate it. Trucking bikers in the house. Hopefully you have a great time doing this video as well. Hope we can see, uh, hope I can see it, uh, it live, some of it. Okay, yeah. So, um, Futura, guys. Um, as you guys may know, over the years, there's been def many versions of the Futura. So, um, and here, just to show you, here, just to show you guys a few. Uh, here, watch this. Um, these are uh, these are all the videos you can see here that I've done over the years of the different versions of the Futura. So there's the red one, the V3, and then we had V2, V3, a bunch of different ones. And then, um, you know, there was a version one, the purple one. There was a purple and red and white one at the time. And then, of course, the blue one and the green one. So, you know, I've done every different rendition of this <laughs> kind of plane, and if they've perfected it, it's just gotten better with each time. Um, but I'm going to answer that question for you right now, CG wise. Okay. Um, what I was doing on mine as I flew it the other day is, uh, and I'll try to zoom here for you. I'll give you a good, a good picture of this here. Let's go. Uh, my remote's not getting in there. I, I'm flying mine on a CG. If you could see the right here, this, uh, this line right here where you've got that uh, plastic uh, doubler there. I'm flying mine pretty much right on that line. And that seems to give me real good st stability uh, with the setup that I'm running. So you can see where that, you know, where that is in respect to the kind of the cord line of the wing, you know, when you measure from the from here, you know, all the way to the full length of the cord, which goes all the way back to the, you know, the edge of the flap or whatever. But but I'm I'm balancing mine right on that line. And it flies fantastic right there. And that's that's a setup that's set up for stability, you know, for speed and control. And, um, and also, a, a, you know, one that's not dependent upon a, a flight stabilizer to fly it. So, and that's where I, I like to fly mine at. So, um, and, but that's, that's a CG that's always worked well for me. So, um, you can go farther forward. Um, you can go farther back if you want. Um, let me close this window off here. But that's where I fly my Futuras at, and they fly great there. So, I can turn my stabilizer off, fly with confidence without it, you know, at that CG, you know, right on that mark. So, um, and then other stuff I, I'll talk about in the video as I do it and stuff. But you can see I do have, ooh, let's see, I do have right here, um, 
This is just some setup stuff for you so you don't necessarily have to wait for the video, but uh, I'm gonna put that out. Yeah, sometimes editing this stuff, guys, really takes a lot of time. That's where the, all the time is used. My ailerons I got on my outer horn, okay? So I'm going for sort of max throw on all of that stuff. And, um, and, uh, and then my flaps kind of right on the next inner hole, okay? And that seems to work really well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I get a lot of, I usually put uh, rates on my ailerons, high, medium, and low. I'll do 70% uh, for the low, 100% for the mid, and 125 um, for the uh, for the full travel. So, and I'll use all of those. So, so, but here's where it gets interesting. Okay, it may differ from many folks out there. Uh, there's my elevator setup. Okay, and you can see right there on the horn, right, right there. Okay, I went two holes in on mine, and I have my setup the same way. Low travel, okay, uh, here it's right there. Low travel, I have mine set up for 70% um, travel, 100 for mid, and uh, 125 for high. I get plenty of rate, plenty of travel out of it, um, and um, I get um, really great torque and really great resolution. Just remember on your servos, they're different on every airplane, but that's where I set mine. So, so with 125% travel in the, in the menu, I get plenty of elevator travel but I also get maximum torque out of the servo, and I get maximum resolution out of it. When you go farther out on the end of the servo horn, depending on the control surface it might need it, you go farther out, you get less torque, you get less precision, because you lose resolution when you do that. So, so, but there's different setups. Again, if you're doing more 3D setups, you go out a little bit, you put in a ton of expo in, and, and that's your 3D type setup for doing higher alpha flying and 3D more maneuvers. But if you want it set up for speed, you want to set up for stability and control and not dependent upon automation, you know, meaning a flight stabilizer, then you set it up this way, you kind of come in a little bit on the horns. So, um, uh, but anyway, that's the setup on this thing. So um, I really don't use a lot of Expo. I put 30% Expo in my rudder travel, okay, because that helps with taxiing, okay, when you're high speed taxiing, you're taking off, you're not over controlling with your rudder. And then when you do knife edge type stuff, you're not over inputting, you know, it's kind of a smoother. But the other control services, I don't have any Expo in this thing at all. So I, I just don't need it. But again, remember guys, Expo is personal preference. It's how your own reflexes, your, your feel for the airplane. Um, something to note too, in full scale airplanes, any airplane you fly, well, mostly, you know, most flight controls are linear. So you move your ailerons you know, your ailerons move in, in, in linear fashion with your, with, your, with your stick. Same thing, pitch and you know, rudder and all that kind of stuff. Some planes, those airplanes, those settings will change a little bit, but for the most part, most flight controls are linear. So, so um, I, I, me as a personal preference, I like flying with linear controls because I can feel more or less what it's doing. I don't like it soft in the middle. Some guys do, so, you know, if you guys like that and you want that, um, you want to have it smoother in the center, by all means, put some, put some Expo there if it's more to your feel, more to your liking. So, so, you know, you set it up the way you want it. But anyway, hopefully that answers your questions on my, uh, my, uh, my setup there. So uh, let's see, uh, there's a bunch more. I'm trying to read uh, some of the notes and stuff here. So, uh, so Matt, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, we got Mike Bird in the house. Mike's here. Uh, yeah, I got the V3 Futura you guys can watch, so uh, you can check that out. Um, you guys got everything five by five. I'm getting your notes here. Yeah, cool. Got good sound. Got some Sean Peterson's, Jess Harris, Ian Bowen's here. The mall looks like a stable flyer. Yeah, I like the blue. Everybody's look, everybody's digging the blue, guys. The blue's cool. I mean, it really looks good actually against the water. Doesn't really disappear in the sky. So, Les Burnham's here from England, Essex, England. Tony Jenkins is in the house. JCB 67's here. Brian Chambers. All right, all the guys are here. So. Let's see what we got here. Um, uh, yeah, for those that asked, website, I oh, know that's not what I want to do here. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Let's go to this. So, yeah, like I said, I've got all these Futura videos. Like I said, if you want to watch the V3, you know, there's some videos of it flying. <coughs> I don't know if I talk about a bunch of setup in here. I might. Th this one we had on the, um, on the um, 5280 seat burner, which I have in the lower left hand corner. They kind of, we, we work with Larry over there, 5280RC, showing a bunch of his uh, stuff there. Let's see, that's a phone call I'm gonna ignore, all right. And um, so, but yeah, Futura flies awesome. It's like a Banshee, you see how fast it is in that pass? I mean, 
Um, you can't beat a Futura. Now, it's not really a beginner plane, of course, but if you can fly competently another airplane, take off land, you can got your own thing and you want to get into EDF jets, it, it, it can be an entry-level jet. There's no reason why. Not. It flies super slow. It's nice and stable. Um, it's pretty solid. You can make more mistakes with it. I mean, you know, it's, it's like I said, I, I landed my full throttle inverted the other day. Not landed, but... You know, I was doing a low pass and messed up, and, and it tore the rudder off, but we glued it back at the field and kept flying it. So, you know, we'll show that in the, in the video. Uh, you guys will get to see that crash. So, anyway, uh, but, yeah, you can't go wrong with a Futura, guys, for almost any purpose. Same, same thing, guys, with this Viper jet, great entry-level jet, you know. So you can't go wrong with a Futura, guys, from FMS or Fair RC. So, again, uh, we, got, we got discount codes. Let me point that out, too. Discount codes right here, guys. It's in the description box below the video. I also put... The code's right there on the screen for you, too. And then the links are in the description. So you guys click on the links. It takes you to the site, and then we get a little credit for it. So uh, we appreciate that. So, yeah, there's your Futura videos right there. Let me see. Um, yeah, we did all that. That's a great airplane. I call it the Banshee. I call it the Screaming Banshee because it makes this howling sound that is just uh, awesome. Uh, sounds almost like a, uh, like a screaming... Uh, Scream an animal of some sort. So, anyway, I call it the Banshee. So, uh, that's my nickname for it. So, all right, let's see what else we got. Uh, we're talking about the mall. As you guys know, we did float videos, one float video, engine failure. You guys got to see my emergency landing. I had to pull a Sully <laughs> in the water, and the wind blew it back to us pretty quick, as you can see. So, it was windy. Um, but, uh, and then we did uh, one at the park where it was also windy. So, I'm going to do another video, calmer weather. Hopefully, we get, you know, on our demo it so I can really kind of put it through its paces and zip it around and you know loop it and roll and all that kind of stuff just it was just so windy and uh, anyway that's the weather sometimes so uh, anyway let's see what we got here let me cut down the, the websites there all right let's get into taking this thing out of the box let's show it off see what we're doing we got about 20 guys here so that's cool we could probably start in on this and uh, let's see what do we got JCB67, Sean Peter, let's see what they're doing. Mark Kraminski's here. All right, green gents from Poland. Mark Kraminski's here from Poland. Hey, I think Mark actually won something. Uh, just so you guys know, that contest we did a while back, uh, a couple months, whatever, a lot of guys won from all over the place. So it wasn't a localized thing. These guys won all over. I think Mark won, uh, won a, um, he won either an airplane cover or he won a screwdriver. I can't remember exactly. But uh, anyway, I got all those emails from everybody. So. All right, 26 guys here. Okay, let's get to the unboxing of this. It only needs a couple of tools, guys. It runs on 3S, okay? Um, I've been running this thing on, um, in fact, let me zoom. No, I did the wrong one. Oh, is that working? Oh, no, that's the wrong remote. I don't need that one. I got too many buttons here, guys. Let's see. Yeah, let's come down a little bit. I was flying my plane mostly on this, okay, right here. Let's see. Let me zoom. Yeah. I was flying this on these Spectrum uh, 3200, okay, uh, three cell packs. Really nice, okay, they work well. Um, you are better off, if you can, flying it with something that's maybe shorter and stubbier, so you got more weight up front, okay, like this is an E-Flight, uh, I flew it on this, I think once, three cell, 3000, so whatever weight you can transfer to the front of this plane, the better off that you are. So uh, we'll talk about CG here as we fly it. Somebody's calling me now. What the heck is this? Oh, uh, yeah, figures. Let's turn that off. I uh, just got a call from somewhere. So, oh, sorry, guys. There's the battery. <laughs> Phone call. Um, you can fly it, of course, on these, okay, 2235C packs. And I think you can fly it on 4S, although I haven't tried it. This is going to be the next one I'm going to put in there probably, 3370C roaring top pack. That gives you a little bit more weight up front in the nose. And... Um, uh, we are going to get to it. So, here, let me back out on the zoom. Let me see what I got on the call log here. Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. Let me get the zoom out here. Sorry about that. Let's back it off here so we can get back into sort of normal, normal stuff. And let's see what we got. I got to take a look at my phone real fast. See what we got. Let's see what that is. See what that is. Yeah, don't, I figured it was stuff like that. All right, that's cool. I got to leave my ringer on just in case the kids need to call me for something. So sorry about the disturbance, but life goes on. You know what I mean? So, all right, let's get the mall out of here. Again, running on 3S. Put a big, heavy, fat battery in the front if you can. 
And uh, let's see, let's get to the uh, screwdrivers and all that stuff over here. You know what, I'm gonna put that all over here. Let's get that out of the way. I'll get our remotes, I'll need those. I don't need that one, those are the only two I need to get this show on the road. So, geez, it just doesn't stop, does it? These people. I get at least two or three calls a day for solar. It's ridiculous. And there's just no way to cut them out. So I gotta figure out a way to get those guys off my, off my back here. So air hammer's in the house, all right. Air hammer, air hammer. All right, let's see, what else we got? Uh, Sean Patterson, Mike Burr, there it is, guys. Uh, Wes, James, and Rich are famous. That's Sean Peterson saying. Wes, Wes and James, those are the uh, motion guys. Yeah, Wesley, yeah. So let's see, guys. All right, we got about 23 guys here. Let's start into this. 1500 millimeter mall. Get this at FMS, it's available. It was a Chinese only version, but now it's available in the United States. So. You guys can get this at FMS, you guys can get it at Fair RC. I'll just get in on the specs, everybody can see all that. 1500 millimeter wingspan, so it's a nice big size, 1100 length. There's your 1050 kV motor and ESC that I'm having trouble with one of them. We'll get that sorted though. Seven servos, nine gram, there's a CG, which I'm running mine at about 55. Um, two bladed prop, 11.7, and there's your three cell, 22 to 3200 pack, which is what I'm running it on. So there's your specs on it. They got some nice pictures on there. We took some cool pictures. So um, the, the pictures I'm using, guys, for my thumbnail now are real photos. I'm flying the plane. We're snapping pictures. So th those are not superimposed. Those are, those are me and Steve taking pictures of me flying the plane. So we're trying to, get, uh, trying to raise the bar a little bit here. Uh, let's see. And then let's get, uh, get in on the parts. This is so you guys can see. We're going to take this all out of the box. Everybody can see this. There's all the parts layout, real nice. Real concise, all screws, no glue, so it's pretty awesome. So, uh, all right, so let's get this thing. Let me go full out zoom on this. Let me do this. Let me lower my table. Let's get this down. Let me check my action cam shot here. See if we can go to our top view so we have a good view up here. Yeah, there we go. All right, let me position the camera, which I didn't do beforehand. So let's see if I can get that kind of where it needs to be. There we go, upper cam. Let's see what we got here. We're gonna go to the top. And there it is, the mall. The mall has it all. That's right, the mall has it all. And uh, let's get this out of here. I tell you what, let me go back to the other view. We'll pop this out of here this way. So, and then I'll throw my, I'll throw my box down there on the floor. So let's see, let's get this thing out of here. Slide this out. Let's see what we got. Pull this out. Yeah, that's nice. Got to like that. Here, let's see. Let's pull. Let's see if I can do it like this. I can do this so everybody can see it a little better this way. There we go. Yeah. Tell you what I'll do. I'm going to flip it like this. Like this. <laughs> We're going into some, some retina detaching maneuvering here. All right, here we go. Get this out of here. Let's see. Here, so you guys can all see it real time as we're getting it out. I don't know if they have a version without floats, but this comes with the floats, so which is real nice. Comes with everything you need. It's a relatively short box. All right, bombs or box away. Here we go. Yeah, look at that. No damage. So there you go, guys. There it is in there. I'll see if I can get a. Uh, here, I'll raise that up. So you guys can see how that looks in there. And uh, everything's where it needs to be, it looks like. So yeah, there we go. That is it. Looks like we got our wings up top here, floats there, landing gear, our floats are here. Landing gear's on the underside. So again, don't throw out your box, your landing gear's right there, your main gear. So uh, for, for uh, nice big Tundra tires in there. So tell you what, let's do this. Let's go to the, uh, let's swap views here in a second. Let me grab my knife, let me grab this out of here. Okay, I'm going to cut these so I can see these. Get that out of there. There we go. Crack that open. Cut right along there. That's good. I'm going to cut right here along the top, right along that seam. Let's see. Cut that. Let's see where I'm cutting. Just along that jigsaw puzzle area. I'll cut this one too. Cut this one too. Don't cut too deep. But you can cut pretty deep and not, not hit an airplane in there. So 
All right, so let's do this. Let's go to our top view. I'm going to lower this, swing this around, and everybody can get the full Monty of this here. Flip this this way. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's hard to fit this one in the screen. This one's a fairly large box. Here, let me see. I can probably elevate this a little bit. There we go. All right, let's get that down on there. And that is what we got. Got to get myself a better swivel ball there. So we'll pull all these out a little at a time. Again, we pre-cut everything. Everything's padded nice. See right there? All right, we'll pull that out. We'll get this, this piece out here. Did I cut that? Yeah, that comes out nice. Be careful when you pull this out. You're not grabbing and dinging your wings. Looks like I got a little, little bit of rash there from the packaging on there. Looks like it was biting into it a little bit, but not bad. Okay, we get our floats out. There we go. There's one. And uh, this one's our right one because it's got the chine right here, and that's meant to keep spray out of the uh, out of the window, out of the cockpit window, and out of the engine and prop and that kind of thing. So here's the next one with the water rudder installed right here. That's your wire there. There we go. Let's see. There's our water rudder, real nice. They also put a nice little plastic deal on the uh, on the apex on the V of the hulls of these, so you can put it down on the ground without kind of dinging that up. So which is kind of nice. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these along over here. Let's see, and then let's get uh, get some other stuff out. Here's our uh, our float gear, our float wires. Pull those out of there. There we go. We got two of those. So I'll set those aside. Put those up there. All right, we got two more for the floats right here. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna use my hobby knife rather than yanking on all those. Let's just go along there. There we go, there we go, there we go. Should be able to pull those out, there we go. Excellent, there we go, so we'll get those out of there. Let's see, we'll pull this piece straight out. It's gone, let's see, spinners right here. Spinners nice on this, goes together well. Inside here is your aluminum uh, prop uh, drive or prop nut, I should say, and your screw so don't lose all that stuff. So nice, nice spinner. So. Put that down over here in the back. We got a little, little foam piece here and a nice little foam pad on the fuselage. We've got some stuff here, lots of screws here, folks, lots of screws. So, um, and the antennas, see we got uh, landing gear straps, Y harnesses, all that stuff. So uh, it's all set up nicely for you in this little bag. So I'll put that to the side too. And then here's our vertical stabilizer, really nice. Nice rudder, vertical stabilizer, nice mall sticker. I think they got that little crooked on there. I think it's supposed to be straighter. Yeah, sometimes they don't get those straight. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> little simulated trim tab here on the back. But overall, real nice. I like the way this plane went together. It went together pretty secure. You got metal threads throughout this whole thing right here. And then these, these you know, plastic doublers. That they pass through. So always love the rudder on a um, on a mall. It just has a look like a. It almost looks like a like a like a tail of a um, almost like a dolphin or something. It just has a really large looking, almost like a, it's like a bat plane tail or something. It's large. It just looks really cool. So um, let me get that to the side, and then we'll get uh, get our horizontal stabilizer and elevator out of here. This is nice, all assembled. It's got a nice spar running through there, so it's got some rigidity to it. These are structural guys, these, uh, um, these struts, okay? And those have screw that goes through each one of them. So there's little holes in them there. So that will, you know, go through. So, but this goes right on with a single screw and a doubler. And then the rudder goes down over top of it or the vertical. So just to kind of see what that looks like and we'll get this all together. This goes down, one screw, then this thing goes through. You see a little pass through there. Okay, and then these two screws hold that down, and then another screw comes up through the underside. So there's actually four screws to get the tail on. So one comes through that way, one comes through this way, two come through the other, through the top side. So it's pretty neat the way this is set up. It's a nice, nice structural, nice kind of scale design to it. It's pretty cool, and it's a good fit. It's a good fit. So uh, yeah, everything's pretty neat. So unusual tail design, the way they have this set up, almost kind of octagonal-ish looking. So. Um, Laminated hinges all the way around. They're foam hinges, but they're laminated, so, you know, they're pretty tough. So this is a nice flat. There's no foil to this, really. It's just pretty much sort of flat. I, actually, it has a little taper towards the elevator, so 
but uh, but it's mostly flat. So, but interesting design, unique to the mall there for sure. So, little trim tab detail, doublers in the middle. There's your elevator control. So really cool. This does not need to move much to get this plane to to do stuff. So, um, but yeah, real nice. So let's get that aside, and then we'll get here's the propeller right in here. So. That is a 11.7 uh, right there, it says. Yeah, there it is, 11.7. That's ready to bolt on, so. I think mine was fairly balanced. It made a little vibrational noise, but that noise is also cool. So here, let's see this. Let me get, uh, let me get this. This is our main spar. This is a big, big spar. I don't know, this is 10 millimeters or something, 12 millimeters. Nice, thick fiberglass or carbon fiber. I'm not really sure, but it's pretty rigid. I think it's fiberglass, but Anyway, it's, it's pretty tough and it's thick. You can see that. Um, let me see if I got my pen in here to label this thing. I usually do this kind of thing. Let's see if this will work. I usually have a black one to do this. I don't know where it went, but it's my silver one. Let's see if this is working here. Um, I'm going to see if I can label this real quick. I usually do this with all of my, all of my spars when I first get them. And uh, let's see if it'll let me write it. Yeah, I was using this a little earlier, so... Uh, S mall A U L E. There we go. That way it's uh, painted on there, you know. Uh, I'll put even put, uh, let's go 1500, even though they don't make another size, you never know. So there we go. So there's my uh, labeling. I didn't want one too much on the M, but that's okay. I scriggled it too much. So yeah, I use these paint markers for that. I usually have a white, silver, and a black, depending on what I'm writing on. Like I said, I usually use black on something like this, but the silver shows up okay. White, you're really not going to see too much. So, anyway, so that's labeled, because I usually sometimes have a pile of spars somewhere, and then it's just pure chaos trying to figure out <laughs> you know, which spar in my trailer or something goes to what. So, all right, here's our instructions right there, ready to go. All the parts and stuff. Here, I'll put that aside. And then let's see what else. Oh, wait, there's something else in here, too. So... There's our programming cable for our, uh, our reflex, so if we want to reprogram it. It's nice you get one of these with every plane so you can charge all your devices with it. And it is a, it is a data cable, so that's cool. It's a thick one. It's a really nice, nice data cable they give you, actually. And then in here, I'm going to get everything. Here, let's see. Let's go pull the wings out of here one at a time. These are sweet. These are really nice, the way they have these set up. And you got a little foam pad there. You can pop that off. That's just for transport. And, uh, yeah, super, super nice. So you can see these are already screwed in. These are a bit structural, folks, so um, they do provide some support. Nice plastic fittings and everything. So, uh, and these are the old-style clevises, but they're nice. They're molded in white, okay? Uh, everything's set up pretty much where they need to be, all the horns and everything. So I think I left mine right here where they were. You can go more on this if you want to put, uh, you know, put more control throw in yours. So, but, uh, and this is something that's unique to the mall, I guess, is usually the aileron and the flap are not lined up together. I don't know why that is. I might want to call mall and Moultrie George and ask them about it. But you can see um, there, there's sort of a little step there, but that's just how they're designed. I'm not sure why, but a lot of good riveting detail. You see the rivets? Lots of rivets along there. So pretty neat all the way around. See, they got rivets. You can see all that stuff. It's very, very cool. So a couple of white components here. They just left these unpainted so real nice this is probably a fuel cap right there and this is a little i don't know if that's an antenna vortex generator or what that is and then there's simulated vortex generators along the wing here those little v-shaped those little v-shaped deals so um but pretty nice construction looks like i got a little rash on this particular wing so that one got a little beat up in the packaging somehow and uh let's see we've got a landing light that's super bright right here and it has a nice lens around it so they did a pretty good job with that, I think. Uh, it's super, super bright. And then uh, I just ding that myself. But you got some lights here on the wingtip, a red and a green one on each wingtip. I'll flip it this way so you can see the nice color stripes on the edge. Flat bottom wing, but the plane flies inverted nice. I mean, it did it well, you know, in the wind. When I get it out in the no wind, we'll uh, get a better, better look at it. So, and they did a good job taping everything up. They taped up all your seams for your light wires, your servos, and all that along here. And then you got your connections here. So you got, uh, in fact, if you got a tool, you can get in there, just kind of pry those out of there. One is for the lights, 
And uh, one is for the aileron, one is for the flaps. See if I can pull those out of there. So just grab something to pull those out. And there you go. You got that. So there's nice plastic doublers to insert all these into. And you can see they're all in there pretty nice. Two screws to get your wing on. Spar goes through. Plug in your wires. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. This is an antenna slot right here for just a simulated plastic antenna that's in the bag. So we'll, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll throw that on there. It comes on and off real easy. Flaps are nice. They're sort of a sort of a hinged, submerged style hinge there. You can see all that. And uh, that's also a laminated hinge too. It's all foam, but fully laminated too. So same thing here. Sometimes you see like the paint on the aileron. It's not sticking in there or you don't see, you see the little white area. That shows you that there's a laminate there because the paint doesn't stick as well to the laminate. So, so it's not just a foam hinge, it's laminated with a, with sort of a, almost like a foam tack type lamination on them. So, so yeah, that's why the FMS hinges, foam hinges are not just foam hinges, they're, they're a laminated hinge, so real nice. So, uh, uh, but anyway, in the old days flying pattern planes and all kinds of fast stuff, we used to seal up our hinges so we didn't get air thrown, going through them, what so gave you some flutter. And uh, these, that's the nice thing about foam hinges, they're sealed already. So, but yeah, super nice wing, folks. Really cool. Awesome all the way around. We'll get the second one out of here. Let's see, same deal there. Don't need to go through all that, but real nice. Nice wing tips. These are kind of, uh, I think they call them hornier style, horner or, horner or something, wing tips, where it kind of reduces the flow of uh, kind of the, the spillover of the high pressure to low pressure or whatever. I don't, I don't know if they got it exactly right on this, but that's the type of wing tip it's supposed to be. Um, but there's your landing light lens on this side. Same details on the top, same rivets. So really cool. So this thing's ready to go, ready to plug into. So, all right, let's get the wings. Let's get these over here. We'll put these over here on the, put them on the other mall there. And then here we got our fuselage. That's, I think that's the last thing in there. So we can grab this out of here. Let me reach over. Let me see, let me reach down in here. Grab this and pull this out of here. I'll flip the view here for a second so everybody can see how that's looking. So real nice, very slick, nice blue. And uh, the cockpit's awesome. I tell you, they did some good detail on that. Um, real impressed with this thing overall. They did a nice job. Um, I think I'd like to see that tail wheel thing a little better, but we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but it works okay. Uh, here, let's see. Let me, go back to, uh, let me go back to that top view, just so I can show everybody. The quality on this is real nice. The windows are super nice. These are sort of a Lexan um, glued in from the inside. So it's real nice. There's no real seams here. They did such a nice job on the windows. And um, you can see this rolls around the front. You got two strut supports that are scale, just like the full scale. And uh, they got a sportsman type pilot in there. You can see he's got his baseball cap on and you know he's ready to rock and roll. He looks like he, uh, he means business. So uh, he's got his sunglasses on and all that, but the windows are awesome on this. You gotta, you gotta like that. And then it also has seats and stuff. If you can kind of see in there, I'll try to zoom. Everybody can kind of see how that looks. I'll zoom on in there. See there's seats all the way in there. And he's got some controls even, I think, too. Here, let me, uh, let me get, well, not really, but he's, he's holding a control in one hand. And then you actually have some instruments in there. Here, let me see if I can, See if I can get a better view of that. Yeah. See if I can get zoom a little tighter on that. There's some cool instruments in there that I'm trying to get in on. There you go. You can kind of see them in there. It's hard to show that on camera, but yeah, it's a full instrument panel in there. It's pretty cool. So uh, yeah. And then there's rivets all the way around the thing. And uh, yeah, really cool. So go to the front part of the airplane. Here's where your intake is. For your ESC, let me get rid of this box. I think I got everything. Oh wait, hang on a sec. There's the wait. There's more. <laughs> Remember, never throw your box out till you're done with your airplane. So, because right under here, you know that's where your landing gear is. So yeah, let's cut that. And get that out of there. That just bolts on with like four screws. So, just cut through that. Get those out of there. And that's it. We are. There's our landing gear. Nice big Tundra tires. So. Those free, free flow roll pretty good. And they're nice and big, they're hard. Okay, not the best for pavement, but on grass and on uh, rough surfaces, these are great, man, they're awesome. 
So um, these are just plastic fittings around there. And right here, you got your uh, wheel collar on there. So, but nice, big, hard, they're hard tires, like I said. So great for grass surfaces and stuff. They'll slide and everything. So um, sometimes you get spongy, rubbery tires, and that's good in some ways, but you can also catch and snag stuff with those where these tend to just slide. So again, depends on your surface and depends on what you're doing with it. So let me throw that down there and we'll get back to talking about this fuselage. So you got all your exits here for your uh, light, your wing lights, landing lights, aileron, flaps, spar pass through right here. And uh, here, let's start at the front though here. Um, you can see there's your motor and a little cooling hole here, plenty of cooling in here, okay, for your ESC and motor. And uh, that's your 1050 kV motor in there. Nice hatch. This has a little metal thing on it. Cool thing they did too was is they put right here a little piece of plastic right here. Okay, so when you do put this on, you're not dinging your, you're not dinging your foam here because it'll actually, the pin hits that little, that little tiny catch of plastic that you can see right there. So as you push it down, it'll hit that. So, and you have to push it in to lock it in place and pull it forward to lock it in. So, but battery base right there, you've got your Velcro in here that you can peel off. And uh, I think I left mine in there actually this time around. Um, but your strap is there, lots of space for a battery in here. So again, you know, I was running uh, this 3200 in here and I actually put mine in this way. I put it all the way in and then I pushed my battery straight down and that, that, that strap holds it in there. It can't move front to back. But like I said, you need bat weight distributed a little farther forward on this plane. So if you have a shorter, fatter battery, that's actually good because the, the weight kind of comes forward on the whole thing. So um, I think it flies better that way. Um, I could just tell in the pitch control. Um, only downside is you got to be careful along this edge. You don't ding this up because I kind of ding mine up a little bit, get my hands in there. So just be careful of that because it's just a foam edge. So, and then this is nice. This is all plastic. So let's see. Ian Bowen's in the house. Uh, let's see. Who else we got here that's uh, kind of watching? We got uh, yeah, Matthew Cox over here. Castion, wait a passion poor hobby. He lacks a partner. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, who else is? Oh, yeah. Guniac also sells burners. Okay, I'm just watching everybody's notes. So, all right. Well, the underside here. Here's what we got. Exhaust pipe simulated. They're all white. They probably should have painted those. Probably put a little black on those. Might look a little cooler or silver. Landing gear mounts are awesome on this airplane. Your main gear just goes right here. Okay, right through here with two straps. Okay, these are your wing uh, attachment points or wing strut attachment points. Here's your pass-through for your water rudder servo. And then right here's your rear, rear water uh, rudder, or sorry, your rear float mount. So these are your two float mounts, these two inner ones. This one here is your main gear mount. All big plastic doubled and kind of ready to go. So super nice. All machine screws. Okay, all metal threads in here, okay, to go in, and we'll get all that together. There's a lower hatch that's really pretty nice. Again, this has a metal pin on it, which is cool. Just flip that open, and then in there, there's your reflex mounted and ready to go, and that allows you to just put an inexpensive receiver in there. So with an inexpensive receiver, um, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you can fly this with stabilization with your reflex. So, and an extra channel on your reflex, on your radio, lets you switch the reflex stabilizer to you know, um, the fully wing leveling mode, which I think they call optimized or something, and then stabilized, um, or I forgot what's the way they were. One's optimized, one's stabilized, and then off. So you can actually turn it off, which is nice. Um, and that's it, All everything's wired nicely. All your light wires, everything's labeled, everything's set up, your mode, all your, all your wires are labeled and ready to just plug right into any receiver you have. So if you want to use an AS3X or something, you can just pull the reflex out and use that. So, you know, as a stabilizer if you want to, that's all. So, and then along the bottom, cooling holes to let the air out. So air comes in the front, cools your motor speed controller, flows to the back, comes out the back holes. And uh, here's our tail section. Here's our uh, one elevator and one rudder servo, one on each side, you can see right there. And then our tail wheel mount, that's where our wing struts, or, or sorry, our, our, our horizontal stabilizer struts plug into, we'll get all that in there. And then there's our tail wheel. Um, this mount I think could be a little tougher. It's a little spindly, but it works. It gets the job done, okay? Um, you can, I, I actually re-glued my other one because it was kind of coming off, but this one looks like it's glued on there actually pretty nice. Let me show you that better detail there, so. But it seems to work okay. This plugs into your rudder and screws in, so not bad. 
Um, there is a little, uh, as you can see right here, there's a little E-ring. Put a little foam tack on that so that baby doesn't fly off and you lose your tail wheel. So just a little bit there. And then overall, the, the paint job's nice on this. They're really nice with the stripes. Color's nice with the blue, the white, black, gray. Very cool. Nice uh, tail numbers. Your, here's your saddle right here where your horizontal stabilizer goes. Your vertical plugs in with a tongue and groove here, screws here, and one screw to get your elevator here, and then one elevator screw through the bottom. So that's going to go through through right there. So, And actually, that's where that screw goes through. So, um, And I think that's about it, guys. Really nice. Super, super cool. So uh, very nice, uh, very nice top. Fit and finish is nice. Very nice, very cool. Love the windows. The windows are cool. So I'll start pulling all this stuff out of here. Let me get, um, let me grab a uh, tool here. And uh, you know, I forgot to get an Ernst stand. So let me go grab an Ernst stand. I'm gonna stick this in here and try and pull these, these wires out of here. So let's see, we'll get those out of there. There, those are sticking out so we get our wings on. There we go, we'll get that. Get that out of there, if I can reach it. Let's see, I might need pliers for that. Here, let me grab my, grab my pliers. Let's see, I got a pair here to grab. Pull that carefully, pull out. So one's labeled lights, one's labeled aileron, one's labeled um, um, uh, flap. So flap, aileron, lights, and you're good to go. All metal threads here again. So again, there's no, no real, there's a couple of self-tapping screws, but the major parts are all, uh, all on this uh, metal, so. All right, guys, we got 32 guys here. I want to thank everyone for coming. So, um, you know what, I actually, I might use my cruising stand here. Let's try this one, since I got it handy. You know what, I think that's gonna work. That's my cruising, cruising, John Cruising's airplane stand. So here, let me get, uh, let me get a little angle on this thing. See if I can get that. Uh... Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll raise the table instead. Here, let's bring this down combination of that. There we go. Look at that. Get that in place for everybody. Look at that. So Ernst stand's great for all these things. I sometimes use this tabletop cruising stand because it, it kind of sometimes fits the planes a little bit better. So uh, yeah, here we go. So all right, what I'm going to do first, I think, you know what, I'm going to stick my landing gear on first. I, I, the instructions go through a bunch of stuff, okay, uh, different ways of, I don't remember what it does. So We'll leave those there in case I need to resort to those, but um, I'm just going to throw, I usually go landing gear, I usually go landing gear, then, um, um, then tail, then wings, it just seems to get, it's easier to handle that way. Once you get the wings on it, it's like a lot to kind of handle, so, um, so here, let me go a little wide on this, and let's do this. Let me put this, put this this way, let's do that, and then we'll go and just throw our landing gear on. So. I, I do usually like to use my Ernst stand, but since I don't have one with me, I actually got one downstairs, I could grab. Let me see if I've got an Ernst organizer here somewhere, which I don't think I have. Give me a second. Just got to look here, see if I can locate one real fast. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let me just throw this box here. Give me one second. I was not totally prepared. Let's see. Let me get, uh, here it is. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this down. This is my nice green Ernst manufacturing stand made in the USA, so you can see all this stuff pretty nicely. Like I say, every time I build something, I'm usually using one of these organizers, or I'm using the, I'm using the stand tray underneath it, you know, so, um, so here, let's do this. Let me put this right here for a second, so it don't fall. Let's see, we'll put this down here. I don't what that stuff, it's some solder or something. Okay, so we'll get to our screw package, which is right here. And what we'll do is we'll get that stuff out of there. I'll drop all this in here. And uh, it's always good to have some kind of organizer stand to get all this together with. So these are our Y harnesses here. These are our screws. I think they're all pretty much the same size. I put that down there. And then uh, these are our Ys. One's for flap. One's for lights. One's for rudder. So we'll get those in there. I always save these bags too. These bags are the best. These Ziplocs. So I always put the stuff back in there. So let me throw those in there, okay? And then I'll usually pack these up. Here's one more set. These are for the tail uh, rudder and elevator. I'm gonna throw those into another one. Let me throw those in there. And then I'm gonna take all these, and just put them back in this bag, 
and put them somewhere. So when I, I have a big bag of these bags, so I use these for all kinds of stuff. So there we go. So, oh, Matthew. All right, Matthew Cox gave me 10 bucks, 9.99. Appreciate that. Thank you for the, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that, guys. Um, as usual, folks, um, like I always tell everybody, you know, I do appreciate that. Um, um, but I prefer that um, you guys keep your money, use my links to buy something, because then that way we get a little kind of cut for it, but you don't guys don't have to spend anything. But I do appreciate it when you guys do that. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, but again, I'd rather you guys not super chat, but when you buy something, buy something from my link below. Use the discount code we got right there so you guys can save some money on it. And that way we get a little, little commission out of it, and it's, it's, it's kind of like you guys get to give us like free super chat money. So that's the way I look at it. So you guys can save money, buy ourselves a plane, and that's, uh, that's kind of how I like it. But, hey, I appreciate that, Matthew, definitely. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Air Hammer. Yeah, I think uh, Motion has one. I think, remember? Yeah, he's talking about it. These guys are... I'm not ready to watch. Shadow's in the house. Shadow Ops is here. All right. Thanks for coming by. Definitely. I'm watching the chat over there. I also got it down here, so um, I'm just kind of scrolling through. In fact, I'll use my, my touch screen there to look. Uh, who do we got here? We got... Uh, that's a new name there. We got Cassass here. Cassass. Happy to own the ASW-17 from FMS Foam Glider. Perfectly calculates in thermal chimneys. That's right, baby. And he's right. The, um, the ASW-17 from FMS is such a nice, ready-to-go powered glider. That thing is, uh, is tremendous. So it just flies really well. It glides well. It's got a nice plastic sheathing, leading-edge sheath that runs the full length of the wing. And it's just awesome because um, it doesn't ding. Uh, that's the nice thing about it. You can land it in tall grass or whatever, and when those branches hit the leading edge of the wing, they don't ding the leading edge of the wing. So, um, okay, so let's do this. Let's get the uh, let's get this thing together. Let's not try to drop our screws all over the floor. I'm going to stick this right down here, and I'm going to go back to our top view, and I'm going to grab our landing gear. Okay, you guys can see how this is. This is pretty straightforward. It doesn't really get any better than this. Let me lower the. I'm going to lower the table just a bit, but. I think it goes on this way, actually, but this is pretty simple. You can see that just inserts right down in there. You just push it into place. If you need to use a tool or something, just take like a... Uh, actually, you can use almost anything, but I usually use a driver or something. And if you have to, just put your hand on the top side and just push this down. And if it doesn't seem like it's seating right, you can just push that metal down into place. But it's in there pretty good. I mean, that's about as good as it's going to get. Um, and then um, we're going to go to for our plastic fittings right here, which is going to be these right here. There's this one. There's this one right here. Okay. And then there's these two straps. And you get, those are the antennas for the top, but you've got this strap and you've got this strap. So I'm actually just going to put them all on there so they don't get lost. Okay. And um, these things have a little bit of a ramp right here. You can see the design on that. It has a little bit of a kind of an angle on one section. And what that's for is um, it's actually meant to, to, to go kind of right here, okay, so it holds that metal kind of down into place. Same thing with this one. This one's got a little ramp there. And uh, here, I'll angle my, uh, see if I can bring the airplane a little closer. There we go. It's got a little ramp right there, here and here. And that fits into those notches, just like that. And then you put screws through, and, uh, and you get going. So let me grab a couple of screws here. We're going to put those down in there. Just kind of pop those down into place. Oh, oh, that's coming out of there. Let's see, get that in there. I'm trying to lock that down there. I don't know if that's going to screw into the metal just yet, but let's get that into place. And uh, here, let me see if I can pan out. Can I pan? Yeah, there we go. There we go. That was zoomed in a little too tight, wasn't I? So we'll get that in there. Get this one here. There we go. So let's get this uh, down into place. Screwing that in there. I'm trying to find where I put my driver. Oh, here it is. So this uses a two millimeter metric. So I'll start putting some of those in. Okay, and then your rear ones, your rear ones are just for your rear float. Like I said, I just put these here because I don't want to lose them. So these don't have anything on the back side. There's nothing, okay? And you can see it's got the beveled edge on the top, of course. So taking four more screws, I'm going to reach over here and grab these. I'm going to put these in here now. 
So I just slide those in there. There's that, there's that. Get that in place. Let's see, we'll get, uh, one of them fell off already. So put that down there. I just put these in just so they don't get lost and I keep them there. Then when I want to put the floats on, these things are sitting right where I want them. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about uh, what happened to them. You know, they're already just attached to the plane. So, um, but yeah, there we go. This will go into place nicely. Get that in. Don't go too tight with it because you can, you can actually break that plastic if the, uh, the, the strap if you tighten it too much. So especially right on the tips of it, you can break that off. So you don't need to go too tight with it. Um, careful using thread lock because thread lock um, can make plastic brittle and then it just breaks, which is why you don't really use them for uh, nylon screw uh, servo horns because they can crack and come off and then there goes your plane. So yeah. So here, let's get this through here. I'm just, again, I'm just tightening these down so I have them in place. And we may take those off later and put the floats on. We'll just kind of see. So there we go. That's pretty, pretty tight, and that's it. That's our landing gear, folks. We are in business. So you can see that. You can get rid of the stand at this point if you really want to. And now we're kind of sitting on all three wheels. We're going to put the stand back up here in a second, though. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's your, uh, that's your mall. Your mall sitting there on the uh, desktop on its, on its three wheels. So yeah, there we go. Did I put the old ones on there? Oh yeah, I might have put the old wheels on. These are the, yeah, these are for the other ones. Okay, they look the same though. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. It's up on the wheels. We're good to go. And uh, we got plenty of, uh, plenty of suspension. You can see it's got nice compression to it. So it's got plenty of room to make mistakes and mess up, and it's got huge wheels. It's nice and wide. Look at the stance on that thing. I mean, it's super, super wide. So yeah, I put my old set of wheels on there. I didn't realize. I threw them both back in the same place. This was actually the new set. So, but uh, anyway, either or, interchangeable parts. Special thanks to Samuel Colt, man. So if you guys don't know where that came from, um, yeah, Samuel Colt, who invented the Colt 45 revolver. Um, he invented the gun, but he really invented the concept of interchangeable parts. In the old days, they had to smith, they had to smith guns individually, and if you needed a part, they had to make the part. So he introduced the idea of, um, of actually making all the same parts, and then you could just take all of them apart, put them together, or interchange parts. So that was, uh, that was his, his, uh, his donation to society, really, was interchangeable parts. That was what Samuel Colt gave to everybody. So not to mention some firepower. Right? <laughs> so, all right, so here we go. Um, now we'll get the tail on this thing. So uh, let's see. Let me see if I can get, uh, see if I can get a nice close view of this for everybody. See if we can get that in the middle of the screen. There it is. So here I'll zoom in on that. See if we can get that. So I'll take my horizontal, okay, which again, you know, has this. And maybe I'll do the top view on that. Here, let me back this off here a little bit. Yeah, this this will fit in like right here. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll do this from the top view. That does look that is better for actually assembly, isn't it? Usually the top section. So um, so there we go. This this just plugs right into the tail. So let me just lift this up, turn it just a little bit. You guys can see how that tail is going to go together. So um, and that's it. You see, we got a nice kind of fitting there. Let me get a little closer on that. You guys can see how that is. There's an indentation right there. And you can see how, how this thing's just going to fit right, right on there. So all I'm going to do is just take this, flip it around, put it right on top, and I'm make sure these things are, these things are kind of out. Actually, let me, uh, let me do a better view of that. That kind of sucked the way I did that. Um, so you can see it's got a, got a little recessed area. You just open, spread these out a little bit, struts, and then just pop that right in place. It just fits nicely like a glove, and that is it. So... Um, I will take uh, one screw, and again, I think all the screws are the same size on this airplane, so you don't have to go thumbing through different sizes, so I'm going to put one right down in there, and we'll get this thing in place. Tighten that down. You don't want to go too tight. Again, once this starts compressing, you've gone too far, so you don't want to go over tightening this, although that might be plastic on plastic now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it is plastic on plastic, I'm pretty sure. So got that tightened and that's it. Horizontal stabilizer is pretty much where it needs to be, except for the underside. 
So we flip that around. We go this way with it. And, uh, and then we're going to do a little insertion here. Let me slide that a little more. I'm going to angle this just a bit. And you guys can see what we're going to do with this. So there we go. So with those struts, see if I can angle that a little more. These struts come right down. We can plug those in right there, right there. It's actually a pretty tight fit. They go right in there. And you get those holes to line right up. And then you put two, uh, two self-tapping screws. That's one location where there are two self-tapping screws. You just want to make sure that those line up, which I'm pushing them in there to make sure they do. And they are actually already, they actually self-line once you take your little screws and you put them in there. So let me move this back this way. So th these are the screws that you're looking for. A couple self-tappings like that. I'm going to stick that right in there. And I'm going to tighten that up. If you guys got one of these, this will work. Probably got a thousand of these if you guys are into RC. <laughs> it comes with all these foam airplanes. Although, let me switch and see if I can try another screwdriver real fast. Uh, nope, not that one. Let me go with this one. This is my infamous Hobby King screwdriver. It's probably assembled almost every airplane I have at one point or another. <laughs> Let's see. That's tight. Again, don't go too tight with it because you can crack that plastic. So there should be one more in there at least. I usually give you, they usually give you a spare. FMS is cool about spare screws. So let me tighten that down there. And that's it. So these are structural though, guys. These do su supply a bit of support for the tail on this plane. So you can see how that makes this thing real rigid. Let me back off a little bit. Let me swap my view. You guys can see this. So that's a, that provides a bit of support there. So without that, these would flex. You can see it flexes here, but once you get these struts on here, it's got a ton of support. So uh, that tail's like nice and nice and rigid now. So, all right, let's get the vertical in place. I'll switch views one more time. Get back to here. Let me see if I can get this out of the way. Put my screws over there. Let me see. And then uh, you guys can see how the top of this is going to go. How that's going to go down. So here we go. Here's our vertical. You can see that. How that plugs in. Nice plastic fitting. Goes right into here. Nice plastic fittings. Metal threads everywhere. So super nice. Just take it. Slide it right in there. Or actually, I take that back. Put the tongue and groove in the front first. And then you got to rotate this a bit. Just get your horn out of the way. And that fits right down there like a glove. And you can see how nice, how nice that tail looks. This thing is, uh, it just has such a nice tail to it. It almost looks like a shark fin, you know, and it's nice and big. This, I'll tell you what, the rudder on this plane is so powerful. When you kick it, it just does a stall turn right away. It just flips around. So probably it'll do fantastic spins, which I haven't been able to get into yet because of the weather. But, um, but yeah, um, that's a nice tail there, man. So here, let's do this. Let's get, uh, get some screws in here. I'll uh, switch back to this top view. I'm going to put one in here. Let's get that going. Let's see, what do we got? All right, we got 30 guys here still. Let me see if I can get that to tap in there, thread into there. Sometimes it's hard for me to do that and show you guys what's actually going in there. Yeah, let's see. And then let me get to the front side view here. You guys can see I'll put one right in here. That one's going to go straight down into place. So there we go. Get that in there. I'm not going to go super tight on those right away. I'm just going to get them mostly secured down there until I feel it kind of bottoming out a bit. I usually put my finger, like I said, right along that seam, and I can feel that seam coming together. I think that's actually that's plastic on plastic, too, if I'm not mistaken. So you can go fairly snug with it, but not, not again, don't kill it. Remember, it's a foam plane you're putting together. So, yeah, we got that. And then um, and we flip it over. Let's do this. Flip it over, and then we're going to put that last screw, which is right there where the struts are. So um, we'll show you that. Boom, right on the top. And there it is right there. So one more screw. Uh, we'll just stick that on there. Drop that into place. Grab our two millimeter metric hex there. Kind of find the center of that. And then just keep turning until you feel it bite. And then yeah, you see I feel it getting tighter. Now it's pulling the rudder towards the thing, which is nice, or the vertical. So. Nice, don't want to over tighten that once again. 
it looks like that's uh, going in place perfectly. Just check your seam here, make sure it's good, which it is. Uh, and that's pretty much it, your, uh, your tail's on there. So we've got two rods to put on back here. Um, let me grab those out of the box here. We've got two of these. I think they're identical in size here. So, And then what I'm going to do really fast here is I'm going to consult with my other one before I go too crazy with it. Um, put this down here. Let me see what I did on this one. I'm trying to remember because I changed it a bunch of times. I showed it in the video. So yeah, my rudder's all the way on the farthest out hole. And my elevator is, uh, that's right, two holes in. That's right. So I can see it right there. Yeah, I remember now. So and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to set this up bloop, like that. Um, here's our uh, vertical, our uh, rudder. So um, I don't see, um, oh yeah, they did give us some. They gave us some fuel tubing. So there'll be fuel tubing in here. Just stick that in there if it's not already on there. Okay, just slide it up there. And then I'm going to take this on the farthest out hole. Let's see if I can get that in there. Should be able to force it in there. I think I almost got that. Okay, let me grab my glasses so I can see that better. Again, farthest out hole for this one because I want lots of rudder travel, you know, on this because it is a tail dragger. So, all right, if it's not totally going in there, which sometimes it's hard to force that in, you can either round the edges of the metal or just grab yourself some pliers and just sort of push down on the back side of the horn. And that will help often just push it back down in there. So let's see if I can get that in there. There we go. That's better. Ah, there we go. So I got that through there. If it goes through tight, that's good. You want that to go through tight because otherwise you'll have a lot of play there. So I'm trying to zoom in to show you what that looks like right here. So just make sure that goes in there tightly. I'm going to turn it around there without breaking my horn there. And there we go. So that's, uh, that's nice and tight. You want that tight. So... Again, that's a good thing. So you want those things play free and they'll loosen up on their own over time. Yeah, sorry for the movement there. Sometimes I think uh, camera, I gotta get a better grippy thing for this camera to get this thing to tighten and lock where I need it to go easier. It's kind of kind of got loose on me there. Tell you what, let me back up the whole thing. There we go. All right, that's good. So, and I'll go farthest out hole on this. I'm gonna turn this in a couple of turns. I won't know until we power it up and get it set up, which I'll do, you know, kind of later. That's not really critical. But uh, here, I'll put it on the outer hole. Let's do that. Put that uh, yeah, that's going to have to come way, way in, actually, because you want this to be 90 degrees to the case, the servo. And uh, let's see. And then this needs to be kind of straighter. So, yeah, let me turn that in just a little more. We'll adjust this later. Again, you can't really do that until you power up your servos, you know. And oh, that's on there. That's really tight threads in there, isn't it? Okay, I'll stop there because that's, that's tough. That's good, though. Everything tight is good. Tight is good. So we'll get this on there, slide our fuel tubing, and there we go. That's, uh, that's your finished product there. So we're going to flip it. Let's see if I can flip it around. Let's see if I can get you guys to the, to the back end of this thing. And to our elevator. There it is. And you can set this up wherever you want, guys. You can go max throw. You know, you can uh, reduce your throw however you want to, you know, however you want to set it. I set mine up going two holes in. So it worked well for me there. And I went maximum travel and it was a beautiful thing. So I had nice control over it there and I uh, still had plenty of throw. So, um, but again, these all setups are personal preference. So again, I just popped that in there. I'm going to push this thing back, get this to See if I can show you that as I do that. Again, I'm trying to go around the cor corner without breaking the horn. And I'm just folding it back there. So you kind of shoehorn this in there, but you want that tight. I wouldn't. If you can avoid drilling that out, I would drill that out. Oh, and I forgot to put my fuel tubing on there. Great. All right, let me go back and grab that. Pull that back out of there. Missed a step there. So you can see they go in there pretty good without drilling. I think they drilled the second hole out to make it a little looser, but... I just think it's too pitch sensitive there, to be honest with you. You want to do super awesome aerobatics with it? Yeah, set it up there. That's cool. Again, all personal preference, but I just think it flies better right there. Um, there we go. Get that tightened up a bit more. That's going to be about 90, roughly. Yeah, about there. Here, I'll come back a little bit. Here, let's go back. There we go. I'll put this on the outer hole. 
Okay, there we go. Pop that into place. Oh, that doesn't want to go in there, does it? Here, let's do this. I'm noticing that ball is not going in there that well. So I'm going to take my uh, hobby knife here very carefully. It's going to spin that there just around the entryway for that, just a little bit. I don't want to make it huge, just a little bit of space there. Because that ball is getting, uh, there's a little ball on the end of the, of the clevis pin. And that's what locks it in. I don't want to break that off. There we go. That pops in. And there we go. Get your clevis. And then they're good to go. So again, we'll program that all later. And then while we're here, you can see your rudder and how that goes together. See, there's your insert. That goes in there. It goes past this hole right there. And then a screw goes through here. So actually, they didn't give me an extra. Oh, no, they did give me one extra. So this is the same screw that I had on these two. I'm going to put that in there. And that's what's going to hold this, uh, this, this wire in place. So, uh, where did I put my screwdriver? I had it a second ago. Here it is right here. We're going to put that one in place and that's it. Good to go. So, and that will hold it in there. Mm. I probably would like to see the tail bus. Like I said, this tail wheel bracket, a little more robust. I might put something around this later um, because you can see it wobbles a little bit. So I ended up re-gluing or sticking a bunch of glue down in there. So, but I may put something over that just to secure that a little better. So, but other than that, that's really all there is to that. Again, I'll usually drop a little bit of foam tack right on this E-ring here. Keep that E-ring from flying off. So we don't have our tail wheel kind of roll away on us. So, uh, all right guys, back to our regularly scheduled view there. And uh, we're starting to look like a plane now. So uh, let's see if we got any questions here. Anybody uh, talking about stuff here? We still got 31 guys here. Appreciate everybody coming. And let's see, let me, uh, let me scroll to the bottom of my uh, chat log there. Let me see if I can get down to that. There we go. Lots of guys. Let's see, uh, somebody's waving their hand. No, just playing Save Money, big project. Okay, there we go. EQ's in the house. Eric Quinn's here. All right. Tim Tootin's here. Tutant is here. Hey, EQ must be a monster project. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys. So let's continue on with this. Next step is really just getting the wings on. Wings are pretty simple. So um, let me grab my spar, which we already got here. We're going to slide that in. Let's get that in place. My fully labeled spar and then we're going to take uh, our wings so and let's get the wings on they get a little rash on the leading edge from the packaging that was interesting the other one didn't have that so interesting so if you guys get rash and it's real bad you know contact fms they'll they'll support everything same thing with the speed controller issue motor i'm having with that if you guys have any issues just contact fms and if you got problems with them just contact me. I'll get a hold of them for you. You know, you know. So I, I work with them a lot, obviously. So, you know, no big deal. Uh, I'm just going to plug these all right in for now. Um, normally, I, um, as you know, I go through each of my links and make sure they're tight. You know, my electrical contacts and everything. So here, let me go to my top view, and uh, you know, here we go. We're going to slide this on. You see, I got my spar in place. I got this down here. I'm gonna slide that in. And uh, I'm going to grab my glasses and put those on. Let's see, flaps to flaps. I'm just going to put that in. I don't know that we're going to power this one up because the other one's already powered up, so I can actually save some time with that and then show you that how that one, how that operates, how that works out. So um, let me get this thing together. Um, when I put my original one together, the other one, um, the China version one, um, I, the one issue I had too was my lights on one side were not working. Like... So I actually ended up putting a Y harness on my flap, okay, and then ran the lights through that. So um, uh, let's see something here. Uh, and uh, that's how I got the lights to work. So it worked out well. This light is only a positive and a negative, um, so it only goes into positive and negative. So that's it. So we're going to slide this in. You guys can see right here. I'll move this forward just a bit. There we go. And there's plenty of space to tuck all these wires in. There's lots of space here, and there's lots of space back in the wing. So 
you can just kind of tuck all that away and uh, slide that all into position. So we'll just get all that in there nice and neatly. The wing fittings go on pretty nice. And uh, let me see if I can get those to lock in there where they're supposed to go. Yeah, that's it. Nice fit. Nice fit. Went in there pretty darn good. So let's see. Let me see if I can flip to my... Uh, actually, we'll leave that view on there, won't we? So I'm going to take this. And this you can do one wing at a time, just a little easier, I think. So I'm just picking this up and moving it around. You can see it starts getting big. Big airplane, you know. So let me get to this and then... Let me slide this back here. There we go. I'm going to put this stand right here. Let me go. Actually, you know what? I'll go right here. That way everybody can see it, you know, through the, uh, through the top camera there. So we'll get through to that. So, again, here's your, here's your screw hole areas here. I'll grab, uh, let me slide this down here. So it is nice when they have the same size screws for everything. So you don't have to kind of guess on those. Um, and put those down there and then at the same time and I probably should have done that differently but I'm just gonna slide my strut down here kind of pop that into place and then that's where my other my strut screw goes so right there we're all good I just need to find my tool there my two millimeter there we'll get that down into place let's see I'll get that let's see if I can get that to lock in yep that's going in nice so I'll kind of angle that so everybody can see that a little better, I think. So I'm just tightening that in place. I'm holding it in the air just so you all can maybe see it a little bit better. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Let me get that down there. You can see what I'm doing there. Again, it's just an underside screw. And then there's another one right here. Right down in here. So that one's a little harder to see. I'll try to get here. Let me see if I can angle it this way. There we go. Get that going. And then before I lose this screw, I'm going to go to this strut screw here. Tighten that up real quick. That's plastic on plastic. You can see how nice the fittings are. The plastic fittings are just outstanding on this plane. They just did a good job. Uh, very nice moldings. So. Um, foam parts to mold foam parts are expensive, especially if you are making large foam parts. So the larger the airplane, the more expensive it is, which is why they try to make the parts smaller. But plastic parts are really expensive to make. That's why a lot of times you don't, if you don't see a lot of plastic on a plane, it's because they kind of went to try to make it a little more less expensive. If you see more plastic parts, you know that it was a really expensive airplane, you know, for them to get together. And that's it. Just those three screws. These two, this one here. And then here, we'll flip to the top view. And you can see how big this is getting. It's pretty, pretty darn huge. Um, again, 1,500 millimeters. There it is. So here, let's do this. Let's take, uh, let's take this. We're going to move this a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to try and put this down here where you all can see that. And uh, let's see. Uh, I think I can rest that there. That should work. Yeah, we should do that. And then uh, our last wing... Same deal. I got to get these uh, things out of here. Let me uh, go back to my top view one more time here. These wires are in there. Just got to pull those out. Again, I'll check all my electrical contacts normally. I'll do that later because these are easy enough to get to. So let me get that in its place. Let's see something here. Get those out of there. That light wire is hard to get out. Again, the light wire is just two, okay, positive and negative. But these are positive, negative, and signal. So, um, but you see all that space in there to tuck all the wires. You know, once you get them connected, there's a lot of space in there. There's also a lot of space in the airplane side of it itself. So, yeah, let's see what we got. Let's zoom in. Yeah, baby, look at that lineup. Yeah, there it is here. So let's go. Let's take this. I'm gonna slide this spar on here. Get that lined up nicely. That should counterbalance the other side a little bit better. And uh, just like we did before, I'm actually going to slide this forward a bit. And uh, I'll see if I can get to a top view. And uh, let's see. Um, let 
And we get all our connections. There's our flap. There's our aileron. Get that in. These are the nice locking tabs, too. Gotta like. Gotta like the locking tabs. So you get zoom in on those. There's your. No, I went too far. No. Gone into the kaleidoscope effect. We've gone to plaid. Here, hang on. Let me back this off. There we go. See, there's our locking tabs right there. How those uh, lock into place. I'm going to push it in and lock it. So um, the lights go in the same way, but again, there's only two connections, positive and negative. So we'll uh, snap that in just to those two. And that should be that. So pop that in. Yep, there we go. And that's all in place. So again, tons and tons of space in here and in here to put all those wires. So here, I'll start forcing those. Slide that wing on a bit. Let me back off on the zoom a bit. I'm just going to put all those in that little pocket there. There's a lot of space there. So we push that in. There we go. Getting all that in there. There we go. Let's see. Excellent. Yeah, I like how that goes together. Like I said, there's a lot of space. Sometimes they don't give you space to put all this stuff. But you can see how nice that just slides right in. So I'm going to grab the wing tips and push them on. There we go. We got a nice, nice joint there. So there we go. So there we go. We're going to pull this apart. Let me flip, flip the airplane a bit here. Oh, it's getting big. I'm hitting my camera. The plane is getting grande. It's getting grande. All right, you know what I'll do here? Let's do this. Let me swap my, uh, it's going to be kind of a pain moving this thing. Yeah, once these planes get big, they're hard to maneuver here, folks. So here, let me go. So I'm going to put this down on my stand a different way. Go back to my regular view there. And then I'll angle this thing on down. No, that's up. Go down on there. Here, let's see. Can I get that angle from here? Yeah, I guess I can. Is it a better angle from the other way? Yeah, it probably is. Okay, that was dumb. Let me go the other way. <laughs> go back to this view again. <laughs> Turn it around. Sometimes I'm always trying new stuff here on the set. Um, I could end up breaking this the way that I'm doing this. I probably should have made sure, really, that this was kind of on the other side of this wheel before I did this, because you can break, you can break this down here. So you want to be kind of careful doing what I'm doing with it. I'm trying to move the landing gear rather than than moving this strut. You can break that strut by doing that kind of thing. So be careful putting that on. Um, that fits in place. There we go. I'm going to put that strut down in there. Let's get that first. And uh, here we go. Let's get that in there. Get that one in. Yeah, lock in place. That is. This is such a nice fitting, folks. This thing. I just this this whole joint here with the landing gear, your plastic um, kind of strut um, extension here, and then you know your 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 strut mount plastic on plastic. Plastic. It's just really well engineered. They just did a nice job. They're precise. They fit well. There's no question marks as to how they're supposed to go together. So um, all I got to do now is get these two screws on. One's down here. One is here. That wing keeps pulling out, so I got to just push it in. There we go. And then I'll tighten that down. It's kind of hard to see that, but let's see. I get that in there. There we go. Let's see here. Uh, see if I can maneuver this better so you all can see that a little nicer. Blocking my own view. There we go. Now that's a good angle. You guys can see that. I think okay. So here, let's get let's get that in place. Uh, I cannot get that. Uh, my wing's pulling out on me there a little bit. Here, let's see. Let me. Uh, that's what's going down. This is the angle I'm holding it at. See if I can get that wing pushed in a little better. There we go. See if I can just get it started here. Get this one started. I had a nicer, um, I had a longer Allen screw like this that I, driver that I just, the other day, just broke the end of it off accidentally. So let me see if I can get in here. Yep, I'm not getting those to feed, am I? Oh, that's just not going in on that one. All right, let me just change the angle here. Let's try it a different way. Yeah, that's actually better. That should be able to let me get that get that on a little better. 
Yeah, I just got to squeeze it. It's just not a camera friendly assembly, this part right here sometimes. There we go. I got that one to thread. So that's good. That's going on. Yay. Right, that's one. Yeah, sometimes getting those holes to line up can be a pain, but once they're lined up and it's in there, you're good. Okay, I need to use my belly now. So, use the belly maneuver. So, I'm gonna push. Oh yeah, that's not good. All right. See, I'm gonna push with my, I got the tip of the wing against my belly is what I got going on. Sometimes you gotta do that kind of thing. So I'm just kind of pushing on it. I just need some leverage to line the holes up. That should line it up okay. Just not getting that to bite. <laughs> Let's see, let me pull that out. Let's see if I can get that. What is going on in there? Pull that out of its place. Let me try a different screw. Sometimes a different screw will help. They give you a couple extras usually, or at least one. All right, let's see. Let me try to get this. I know you guys can't see that, but. Ah, yeah, there we go. Oh, finally. All right, I got it. Yay! <laughs> well, that means it's tight. I really had to push the wings on, you know, pretty hard to get those to really to line up. That was kind of a pain to get that to go in where I needed it. But once you get them in there, they're in there. So plus you fly it around a couple times, it loosens it up and it gets kind of settled to where it's gonna be. You can remove these wings for transport, um, but if you can avoid it, probably would. Just leave it all, that was a, cause it's like six screws to get the whole darn wing off. So let's see, getting that one in place there. I'm just holding it with my hand. And that is it guys, voila. Flop this around, get back out of the zoom wide angle. <coughs> <coughs> and that's pretty much it, folks. That is it. That is the size of this thing. I cannot wait to get this out and fly it some more. It's just a fun plane to fly. Just one of those sporty aerobatic. Might have been something up with the tip of that screw that wasn't going in there. All right, and then we got some antennas. Bling. So uh, just to give you a close up of that. I think I can swap my camera one more time. There we go. There's your top of the wing. There we go. And this is what these things look like. You just push this, put this right in here. These come off for transport. Actually, that one's kind of really loose. So you could actually put some glue on that just to let it dry a little or stick a little foam tackle to dry up. Don't glue it on, but, or something, and then just slide it back on. That's actually kind of loose. My other ones are really, a little tighter than that, but that's it. And then when you transport this, take these things and stick them in here. Like put them in a plastic, put them in one of those Ziploc bags and stick them up here. So you don't lose them or they don't break off or whatever. So, but it's a real nice scale detail. Yeah, that needs to be tightened up a little bit, but otherwise, um, yeah, those are sporty guys. The little antennas sticking up on the top. Very cool. Yeah, detail on this model is pretty darn awesome. So, and uh, let's see, let's get our, uh, get our prop and spinner. Let's see, I'm going to move this over a little bit. Zoom that on. Get a little zoom in there. Oh, my cover's coming off my table. My shelf liner grip. Let's see there. There's our prop spinner. Let me grab those. Grab this. So let me grab my little screwdriver deal. I'm going to walk over here. Let me put this on. Like this, so here's our prop and spinner. Let's see here, go back a little bit. So let me get this stuff. This is nice, it's got a knurled end. It's not like your typical FMS, where it's got the hex drive, which I like the hex drive, but these two go on with friction. So, you know, you can kind of see, there's your knurled end right there. I'm just gonna put that on. Okay, and then um, this is your prop drive and screw. So we'll take our prop, put that on. Yep, very easy. And then let me get this out of here. We'll take our prop drive, put that on there. Put something through there. 
to turn this. Okay, this is how I broke my other two millimeter <laughs> drive the other day. I didn't put it in all the way. I put it in part of the way and I snapped the end right off of it. So, so don't do that. <laughs> Let's see. Get that tight, but not too tight. Just get it on there so it's on there pretty good. Usually you want to keep the prop off um, until you power up the plane to get everything set up and then put the prop on. You, know, you don't want to power up for the first time like that. So um, here, and then uh, we'll take uh, the spinner, which, um, uh, what the heck did I do with the spinner? All right, hang on a second. I lost the spinner. <laughs> hang on. Oh, it's back there on the table. Hang on. Let me run back there. Let me grab this camera. Move it out of the way. Grab my spinner. There it is right there. Back off through here. All right, there we go. It's a little tight getting through that back corner there. Here, we'll just throw that right on place. And this is nice because it's got good, it's got good channel all the way through. You know, it's not a crappy spinner. It's got this nice channel here, here. Kind of goes, locks into there. So it's a nice locking spinner. It's not a crappy one. So let's see. And then uh, my one screw through the middle. Stick that in there. And there we go. Get that on there. So get it tight, but don't over tighten it. Don't need it. If you need some thread lock, just put a little bit of uh, foam tack on the threads and then just put that into the aluminum and that'll keep it on there without having to use any... Uh, any a thread locker that might mess up your plastic. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It's 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 together now. It's just you know take your receiver, stick it into the back hatch like we talked about, battery up front, trim and tune, and you go fly. So so yeah, that's pretty sweet. So um, let's see if we got any guys some questions. I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of this. I don't need the stand anymore. This thing will stay by itself. Um, again, there's Y harnesses in here. Y harnesses are for your uh, for your uh, rudder, flaps, lights, okay? So it comes with all that. Let me put that back here. Let me see. Do I got anything else going on? Here? Oh, yeah, that's right. We still got to put the floats together because there's all these set screws in here. We'll flap the floats together real quick, and uh, we'll go into it. But, man, this thing's nice. And then uh, we'll light it up. We'll light up the other one. I got it all ready to go, so it's all plugged in and stuff. Still needs a speed control on it, but look how big this thing gets. I mean, it's just a massive, massive model when it's done. So, uh, like I said, I can't wait to tear around with it more. I didn't get to do that, you know, with the other one. So, um, just because the speed control on it went bad. Um, um, I, did, um, I did put those weights up there we talked about, so watch the flight video. I'll show you where I put those. You don't need to put weights on this thing. You can just put a heavier battery in the front. It probably solved the problem. I just didn't have a shorter, squattier one. So, um, but... Uh, but here, let me do this. Let me take, uh, let's get the floats together, just for the heck of it. Let me put this plane right down there on the ground. It'll actually sit on its wheels right there without going too far away. Yep, here, let me put that, just trying to put it right on the ground, sit it on the prop and the wheels without dinging anything. Yeah, there we go, that'll sit right down there. And then we'll get these floats. Floats are cool. So, these go together pretty well, pretty easily. Again, chines on the inside. That's this little lip that sticks off on the inside. Again, that's to keep spray off of the pilot's window and the engine and the prop. So it kind of keeps the spray down so it doesn't, you know. Anyway, uh, not that there's a real, real pilot in there, but get another one of those. Let me see what that is while I'm getting all these metal parts. Let's see. Let's see, I'll put that down there. Let me kill this real fast. Take a look real fast. I think I know what that is, but here, let's take a look. I just got to take a quick look, guys, at what I'm looking at. Here we go. Yeah, I figured that's what that was. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Um, you got two of these. You got two of these. So, and what I'm going to do, we're going to put this whole thing together, probably right on the table. Let me go down. Ba -da 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 -da. All right, let's see what we got. Go down to the bottom. Let's try this camera view from the top. Let's see if we can get this working. Damn, boom, there we go. All right, let's get, these, uh, get this on the table and we'll kind of go through this from a sort of a bird's eye. Um, this is real easy to assemble, folks. It's about as, about as easy as it gets. Um, get these things on here. I'm gonna grab all of these set screws, there's a whole bunch of them in here. You see they give you, there's actually eight of them. So 
and they're all right in here. You can see them all those there. Um, so I need a millimeter and a half for that. And if you drop that, you're screwed because it's all going to be on the floor. You're not going to be able to put the thing together. So you got to be careful with that. Um, you need a millimeter and a half driver for those. So usually what I'll do is I'll put all this stuff together first. I'll put the screws in first. So you can see I'll put one on there. Okay, right there. Just stick that on there. And then just get all these in place. So start putting those in. You also sometimes may need to look through this hole and make sure it's clear all the way through. Sometimes there's some plastic flashing in there that you can't push the rod through. And sometimes you got to drill it out or something. That's kind of rare, but it does happen. It's not that uncommon. So again, taking all eight of these, I just put these all on there to start with. Just get them started. You don't have to put them all the way in there. You don't want to block the hole, of course. So, um, and this is it. So just get all eight of these in. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Let's see, make sure we're not blocking the hole. I don't think we are. All right, let's see, we'll get this one on here. Nope, this way, there we go. Put that in place, there we go. That's one done. We're gonna get two done here. Let's go here, get that in. You know how many pairs of these things I've assembled? Done a whole bunch of these, man. A whole bunch of these. Most of the FMS airplanes, not all, but most, use these floats. But some of them are different in that the wires have a different bend. These wires, some of them have a different angle to them. Some of them have a different slope to them. But most are about the same. So, <clears throat> you know, from a manufacturing point of view, um, if you can keep all the parts the same, you don't have to reinvent or remold another part, you know, like a float or something for, for another plane. So it just, it's cost effective for them to do that. So um, these floats probably should be a little bit longer for this airplane, but it gets the job done. If you guys watch the, the float video I did, plane wheelbarrows a little bit into the, you know, the front of the floats probably should be a little longer. But if you hold your elevator, hold your stick back, you know, while you're taxiing, and you're giving it some throttle, the, that airflow of the tail keep the, the nose up, and it'll, it, that's kind of what you need to just do it to get the thing, to, to get the, the taxing done right. So um, anyway, no big deal. So what I'll do is I'll start off by putting one of these in there, if this will fit. Okay, let's see if I can get that in place. There we go. And usually I put these in, I line them up so they're equal with the edge right there. So that, that end is just sitting there, it's flush with the plastic. So, and I'll usually just do one at a side, one at a time, one side at a time. So I'll put this one in, um, and then what I'll actually do to keep these from flopping around too much, because you can damage your foam, is I'll start tightening one of these just a little bit. Here, I'll back this off a little bit. Let's see. And hold that at the right angle. And then let's see. Uh, yeah, just get them sort of luke. Not super tight, but just enough where, you know, it'll still move a little bit. It's not totally locked down. Same thing with this one. You just got to make sure it's on the flat spot. Because remember, these all have flats, you know, already pre-cut pre into them, which is super nice. The work is done. And what I mean by flat is this right here. The end of these all have their own flat spots already in them. So you don't have to do anything. They're already carved in there. So, and that's what you want the set screw to contact is that flat area. So, um, and just so you can see a closer look at that. And I'll usually take the two of these. See if there's one of these that's longer than the other, but they're usually about the same length, which it looks like they are. So you want the flat spot that you can see right here to line up with the screw. And that's what I just did with, with these. So you just take that, slide it in there. Usually if you just go to the point where it sticks out, then just back it off a little bit, that's where it should go in. So I'm gonna slide that in there, taking my driver here, tighten that up. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you can just get it in there to a the point where it locks in, which I think it is right there. It's biting. So let me back that off just a little bit. That thing. So let's see. If I tighten that up, that should bite down on that flat area. So like I said, back this off. Let me back it off and see what it, what it looks like. We should see. If I can get that out of there, I probably need to come back a little more. Uh, is that not going to come out now? Uh, hang on. Let me get this thing to... There we go. There we go. I'm just going to show you all what that looks like. If it'll come out. Nope, it's not coming out because it didn't come out enough. 
it'll bite into that, that flat area there. It's still not out there. No, oh, that should go. Oh, that, pe that does not want to come out, does it? Okay, I'm going to leave that one in there. <laughs> I'm just not going to take it out. It just is refusing to come out of there. I'll try and demonstrate it with a different one. Yeah, let's see. Is that... Yeah, that's locked in there. That does not want to come out of there. So, again, I'll tighten that up. Back this off just a little bit. Again, I usually set these up so they're flush. You can see those right there. Little pieces of metal just touching the edge of that. And that should be good. And then here's the other one. I'll put this one in. Again, I'm going to line up that flat spot in there. I'll try and demo it with this one if it'll let me do it. Here, let's try to put that there. Tighten this up. Let's see, it should lock down on that flat area. And if I back it off, it should leave a little circular impression in there if it works. But once you do that, it may not let you really take it out that well. So, nope, here we go. Nope, it's really not showing it, but you might see a little circular indentation, okay, right into that flat area. You just want it to bite into that flat. Um, but let me slide that back in there. One more time. Let's see, we'll get that right against the edge. We'll tighten that up. And again, get those about flush with the end. And that's it. So I usually get one half on, like you see it like this. You don't have to make them super tight or anything, just get them mostly attached so they're not coming off. And then I just stick the other end on. So I'll literally just put that down there like that. You can see all your flat areas are lined up. These are lined up. You can see they're all lined up, ready to sort of just plug in that side. It just seems to be sort of an easier way to get the whole thing together. And it's pretty quick. Pretty quick how that goes in. So we'll line that up. Um, get that into place. There we go. And then you can see once those are in there, you just back these off so they're flush pretty much. If you need to tighten them a little bit, you can kind of tighten them up just a hair. But, um, so I'll just push that forward, push that in there, probably just tighten that up too much. So a little bit of fitting to do. And there we go. Get that to line up. That one's in there. Pretty close. Okay. I'll pull this out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm blocking. There we go. That's the back one on. Get your front one on. Let's see, I'll tighten that up a little bit. Flip it this way. There we go. You can see that a little better on that side. There we go. Making sure that's flush. And that's about it, guys. Just get these together, and you're in like Flynn. Go get that on. See, this one's poking out a little bit right there, so I'm just going to push that down. Should go in there nice. Let's see. Get that in there. Mm -mm -mm. It's pretty close. Let's see. Back that off a little bit. All right. Come on through there. There we go. That's it, guys. Just tighten them up, and you're good to go. One thing you do want to check, too, is make sure these are flush with each other. See, sometimes you can see how one float is not, you know, they're not parallel to each other sometimes. So if you've got that, you can't always fix that, but usually you can twist them a little bit, or you can loosen all the screws, okay, and then turn them and then just re-tighten them a little bit, okay? And then also, you'll also know too, because when you put these on the airplane, when you slide these into the, into the slots, you may need to loosen these a little bit, okay, to get, you know, in fact, all eight of these. You might want to loosen them a little bit when you slide these into the uh, into the float slots okay so so and that's really about it so but that's your floats this just goes up through the pass through and you're uh, you're good to go so I think we're gonna kind of just stop there with all this part I don't think I'm gonna stick this on there because it's easy enough to put the floats on I'll just show it to you on the uh, on the large one so there you go guys on the one that's finished so there's your float set I usually tape these up right along the edge okay and then run this through the slot and um, you guys can see that, like, right here. Um, in fact, we'll plug this one in. Let me take this one's on floats. Let me stick this, uh, here, I'll put these down there. 
Yeah, it'll stay there. And uh, oh, that's interesting. There's a big hole in the back of that one. <laughs> Let's see. All right, we'll put this down. Again, this one's still, this one's the one I was flying in the videos, okay? And uh, let's see, I'll fire this up. I'm going to put my safety on. And I'm just going to put a battery in here. So um, let me lift this up. I got my, uh, my safety on. I'm going to push this all the way down in there. Pop it into place. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to connect it first because it works better that way. There we go. Stick that down in there. And that's it. We are plugged in and we're good to go. And uh, you guys can see the lights on it. How nicely it lights up. There we go. So, uh, and that is it. This is the plane from the video, guys. Um, and it flew real well. Um, you can see here. I'll show you from the top view here. Uh, well, no, I'm not. Not with the camera like that. I'm not. Let's see. So, uh, you can see from this back view, right here, you can see here's the, the wire from the water rudder. It goes all the way up here. I ran some tape here, here, and here. Scotch tape, 3M blender, whatever you got. And you can see here that it goes right on into the fuselage, right into here. And I put a little piece of tape just to keep the water out. And then you can see your, rudder, your water uh, or your mountings. You just unscrew these, take your landing gear out of the mount, the, the regular landing gear, the wheels off, and then just slide these into place. Mine were a little tight getting them in there, but then you just put your straps back on, and there you go. There's your four sort of float mounts. And, um, and that's it, guys. I mean, it's, it's really nice. You can see how bright the wing lights are. The wing lights are out of this world super bright. In broad daylight, we could see these. They're kind of blinding. Same thing on your wingtip. Okay, those are super bright lights. So, very, very cool how nice and bright these were. There you go. You can see the red on that side. And, uh, and that's it. So, we'll be doing another demo of this, like I said, for everybody here. Um, once we get the new motor, or we'll get the other one out and just fly it probably. So, um, but that is, your, uh, that is your mall, guys. The mall has it all. Uh, it's pretty nice. Like I said, it's got those nice plastic... Lexan skids along here so you can put this down on whatever surface and you're not going to ding the underside of the hole. So it's nice. You're not going to dull, you know, the apex of the hole, of the V-hole. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So everything's working nice on mine. Aileron's working, elevator, rudder. That's maximum rudder with my water rudder. Flaps are working well. You can see my flap settings there. So uh, there they are coming down. That's one setting of flaps. I only used about maybe 10 degrees of flaps there. And then I went down to probably 40, 35, 40 degrees for full flaps. And I did use a little elevator to flap mixing, I think. So <coughs> CG moves aft a bit when you put the floats on. It moves forward when you take them off. So somebody mentioned the other day to put the weights on the on the leading it on the uh, front of the floats, which yeah, you can do. I'll probably end up doing that. Just didn't have time to cut them in there because I'll probably put them in there so they're permanently in there. So, um, but uh, let's see. Uh, let me see if anybody's got questions or anything. Let me see if my throttle's working. Yeah, see, it's still it's still messed up. Something's going on with them. I don't know what it is. Yeah, there's a like I said, I probably have a motor short or an ESC short of some kind. Probably something to the motor wire. So. Um, we'll just replace it. Like I said, if you guys run into problems with this stuff, if you have a bad motor, bad speed controller, bad servo, you know, wing problem or a part problem or whatever, FMS will take care of it. And again, if you can't reach them, get a hold of me. And I, a lot of people get a hold of me, and then I, I talk to FMS and just send them the, the across. Sometimes they just don't get the message, but they'll take care of it. So, you know, no worries there on that. So let me raise this up. And that is it, guys. That is our mall. The mall has it all. Uh, Let's see, any other questions? Got Ian Bowen, Mike Ward, uh, let's see. Got the uh, Mike Bird still here, Shadow Ops. Uh, Jeff Wilfong was here, yep. Uh, let's see, who else? Tim Toten was here. Carl Wynn Jr. Yes, it comes with floats. So, and again, for you guys, I put the discount code right there. Put them in the bottom, right down there. So you guys get a code, save 10%. Um, use my link in the description box, that helps out a lot too. So. Um, but I think that's it, guys. I think we're going to 
kind of wrap this up unless you guys got any more questions. Um, here, let's see. Uh, let me see if I can go a little bit, uh, watch a little bit of video. You guys saw my engine failure there, of course. So let me look at, uh, let's go here, here. If you guys hadn't seen the videos, check it out. I'm going to put those up so you guys can see. There's our, there's all mullet floats there flying around. You can see uh, we had our engine quit on us. <laughs> I showed that in the first shot. So I thought that was interesting to see. So usually you just fly straight ahead, land in the water, unless you don't have enough room in front of you. So, uh, but yeah, there you go, man. There we go. Flaps there it up. is, going up there. Uh -oh. There, my motor quit, and then we landed it. So, uh, yeah, let me see if I can get through that again. Let's see, yeah, here we go. I'm just gonna, this is where I'm it happened. No, no, that's where it quit. So again, not the best day. Five percent travel. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Tons of resolution. And I'm just the faithful the day where I had to do the sully. Weather vein. Sully okay, maneuver. So. All right, here see we here. go. Perhaps. There we go. Uh-oh. Yeah, there really it was. Lights, can't you? Take it off. I mean, they're, they're really so, out. yeah, guys, nice airplane. Flies well. Does well in the floats. Does well in the there wheels. Flaps coming up. Engine quits. Uh -oh. You can land it safely. Something there you go. Happened. Nice we landing land. right there. And that's how that's done. Right, so very good. Uh, all right, guys, that is it. Uh, looking for more questions. If you guys have any other things you want to ask, it's a nice model. You get you get it FMS right now. And uh, here, let me go to the pages. Let's see. Is it show? Uh, here, there's uh, there's Fair RC. They've got your uh, green Futura. And uh, A U L E. There it is. You can hit that, and boom. There's your mall. They got it in stock. You see, they got parts and everything. So, uh, actually, let me go back and see. Yeah, see, there's some good pictures of it. Great low speed airplane. All the parts. They got some really nice. Um, I think I saw some nice pictures now. Nowadays, they're using. They're really cool stuff. Let's see. Let me back off for one second. Let me back a little bit. That's Fair RC. You can see the parts that are available for it. So pretty cool. And then uh, uh, Fair RC. Oh, I already had the mall in there. That's right. Uh, let's see. Let me go forward. That's right. I had gone to the. Uh, the good news is, is look, showing there's enough the, uh, flight controls. So in an green Futura to, to land it. Um, actually, the it's floating back, there. so I might go retrieve it. Let's you want to see film what retrieval? we got. Let's go there, <laughs> there. Let's see if I can get it. I think the mall, I think it was back here somewhere. There it is. There's your Futura. There's your mall. Good FMS. There's FMS. They got their uh, mall on the floats with and without. So again, guys, save 10%. Use the coupon code. There we go. Man, Let's I'm get this bummed. going. Really Gooniac, KMRC, <laughs> all the sponsors of the channel, <laughs> Flying Tiger <laughs> RC. But of course, I'm mounting all of my planes on, as you can see above, above us. So, um, I use all these uh, Flying Tiger uh, RC um, metal racks that are really nice for, you know, for uh, supporting all the airplanes and storing them all and stuff. So, uh, Hobby Zone. Let's see, Ernst Manufacturing, Turbines RC, and of course, China Hobby Line, Roaring Top, one of my favorite batteries around, and the Amazon Store. So. So that is it, guys. Uh, let's see. Any questions uh, relating to uh, anything? Let me see what we got. Websites. I'll kill that. I'll go back to back to the chats. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh, does it sit better on the floats in the calm weather? Uh, yeah, well, as it usually does. But again, it seems like the floats could be a little longer. Like if you look at the full scale mall, um, like here. Uh, here, let me go to. Uh, let me show you this. Which was right. Again, uh, right let me go to uh, that notch, babe. If you want to get on that one more time, um, right there. Throw the that's websites about back in there. That, that made it really stable. The mall, M A U L E. You know, on a smooth day or whatever. But and then the only other change. Mall aircraft. All these horns. Amy, if you want to get on this. Call me again. Okay. Give it okay. No, it's on the outer. Yeah, yeah, I figured they'd be calling the me crazy this week. So uh, let's see what we got. Okay, that's on the uh, sort of the next one in. 
Um, Let's see, right that's what that was. Let me look here real quick. I got the rudder full Just scheduling okay. stuff, guys. Let's see. Yep. You got 30 expo there. Let's do this. Yeah, um, yeah, if you go to Mall Air, Mall Street, Georgia, you can look and you can see. It shows you shows you mall aircraft and stuff. You can kind of see the full scale airplanes. Okay, without me and uh, uh change yeah. too much Moultrie, it, Georgia, yeah, baby. So let's see. Um, let me see. I think it's M7 with, uh, with series. Maybe. Let me so, click on that um, and see what that gives us. I'm going to show you guys. There was a picture that showed buy a mall. So you can click on buy a mall and go buy one, I guess. So let's see. I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to look at the. Actually, there was a really good picture I wanted to show everybody. Um, sometimes 2023 it's model. Let's look at problem. that. Now, the speed all right, let's try this. Let's go. Uh, to be, but it's got to be either the speed controller or the motor, and that's just a one-time bad component. The mall that kind of does happen with, yeah. with some there of these go. things sometimes. There were some good cool. pictures of this, and I'm uh, trying to remember. Yeah, here's a pretty good shot. I guess this one's good. Speed controllers but you can see but that's it. Over a decade, that's not much. the floats Maybe actually extend way beyond the nose on the, the plane on the full scale. So, uh, anyway, just um, see that? <laughs> and ours <laughs> stop <laughs> almost right at the nose, so they could be a little bit longer or shift forward a little bit more because I think it needs a little support on the front. But it flies well like it. You saw it from my video. Like I said, when you taxi this out there, I think and actually in full scale float planes, they do taxi with stick back. I think most of the time. I, I don't quote me because I've never flown again. float planes, okay. but full scale. But um, but uh, with this, hold the stick back and you add throttle. That that wash so over the tail the pushes the tail down. Fun, It'll keep the front off. Okay, so just um, just understand that if you taxi with this plane, keep your stick back and you'll be fine. You know, taxi is fine. In heavy winds, you saw a couple times it almost wanted to flip over on its front quarter. So. Um, but just keep your stick back, keep it into the wind, and you should be okay. So, um, but anyway, uh, just just interesting stuff. With this. Uh, <laughs> let me see. This is another mall. Let me look at this one. Yeah, this is another picture of floats. They're selling airplanes. Like. Uh, I was trying to just get to that picture. Okay. See, this is another good picture. Again, this is a replica um, of the uh, full-scale uh, mall aircraft. And you guys of course, can look it up online. I might put a link below. You guys can there it is, mall right aircraft. there. I think it's multi see if I can kind of zoom in and make that a bigger picture. So there you go. A, uh, see how the floats extend way beyond the nose? Scale, so. So, and, but this, they yes, stop Amy, right up the, at the nose pretty much. Her so you can kind of see they could come forward a little bit. So I mentioned that to FMS, so they'll know. I almost thought about actually trying to shift these back a little bit, just to, I mean, or, or shift the floats a little farther forward. They go back to the right length, but they don't come forward enough. So, um, and when you look at these pictures of these malls, you can see almost that the, the floats are almost pretty much as long as the airplane is. Um, it was one really good picture that showed that. Uh, I think it might be this one. This might be that. Yeah, this was the picture. Yeah, if you look at this picture, yeah, and you look at the, the I don't know if let me expand that, there you go. If you look at that picture, I mean, if you shift those floats back, the floats are almost as long as the airplane, you know, whereas these are a little shorter. But again, they work fine in this, so it's not, not everything's perfectly to scale with all this stuff. So. Um, but anyway, guys, check it out at uh, FMS Model uh, Hobby. Use the link below, you know, again, and use that referral code that I got for you so you guys can save a little money on it. And uh, it's an awesome bird. And stay tuned because I'll get another video out of it here shortly where I'll hopefully get out there and really tear it up and uh, really fly it around a little harder um, when I got, you know, kind of no wind to mess with that. So, and I think that is it, guys. Let me push this down. Yeah, system's idle. And I think we're good. Let me see if anybody's got any other further stuff to throw in there. Let's see what we got. Uh, let me lower this a bit. We lower the camera a bit. There we go. And then all together. There we go. Excellent. Synchronization of the switches there. So, uh, yeah, nice present. There you go. Uh, I hope mine will would be, but one is only six. Uh, yeah. Uh, dropping forward. Uh, look to be uh, dropping forward in the video. That's all, Rich. Maybe floats need to uh, go forward a little more. See, that's kind of what I think. If they just went forward a bit. But, uh, but again, it, it, as is, it's fine. It's not, I almost think like the wires should be rebent and have them forward a bit, but, but again, it works fine. You guys saw the video. It's, it it's good on the water as it is. So, um, I actually thought about cutting a set of floats, putting a plug in, 
and just making a longer set of floats for this, maybe. Just making them a couple inches. Only need to be a little farther forward, maybe. Um, but again, as is, it's fine, guys. It does the job. It just, you know, not everything's perfect in the, in the world here. So, um, uh, all right, Ian, yeah, thanks for asking all the questions. Let's see. Uh, what maximum 4S? 4S battery, whatever you can take, man. In fact, these long batteries that I put in there, these long 32 Spectrums, okay? Four cell, the same, the same length. If that'll fit in there, that'll probably give you the weight you need. I just haven't floated on 4S yet. Just, like I said, my motor or speed controller is crapping out on me, so. So I really didn't get to all of that, but um, but yeah, you can see how long this darn thing is. So uh, here, this fits in there. I kind of wedge it a little bit. You know, you gotta push it down in there, but it goes in there just fine. So, you know, if you want to get an idea of that, you know, you're looking at probably, probably five and a half inches is what you're looking at. Or, um, or what, 1,500, I can't even see that, 1,400 millimeter or whatever. That's not the right color ruler. There we go. So you can see, pretty long battery, but this one's really thin. So yeah, you can use a long battery. It goes, like I said, that thing goes all the way back in there. So the more weight you got battery-wise, probably the better off, you know, better off that you'll be. So, um, but shorter, fatter batteries, shorter, more compact, pushed forward. Probably the, probably the best way to go if you, if you got it. But um, but yeah, I'll try it on 4S here eventually here. We'll get out there and do that. So, um, but uh, I think that's it, guys. I think we're going to close it down. Let me see what else is going on. Uh, Shadow Ops is still there. All right, guys. Guys are heading out. I think we're done, guys. Just wanted to give you a quick view of this. Um, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already. Hit the notification bell. Use our code there to get yourself a discount on the airplane. And that is it. FMS is back with the mall. Super nice model. I'm digging this. And I can't wait to get it out there again. So, all right, guys, I will sign off. I want to thank everybody for watching um, and uh, checking out uh, the channel today. And uh, please share the video around. Um, share it with a lot of people if you don't mind. Uh, let people know these videos are out there. And share the code, guys. Look, guys. Uh, let guys save some money on the plane, you know, spread it around so guys can, um, um, you know, can save a little bit on it. So, um, but um, anyway, signing off, guys. Thanks for watching again. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll be back out doing some more stuff. So uh, thanks for watching RC Informer once again, guys. And as always, see you all next time. In order to hover under the bridge, I would have to be as gentle as possible. The first attempted walk